Good evening and welcome to Tele Isla's News with the most relevant and important information of the day. A day of emotions was experienced at the Coral Palace after Governor-elect Everett Hawkins arrived to greet his supporters. This after he was released from prison as he was being held on house arrest since September of last year. At approximately 9 o'clock in the morning, the governor visited office by office of the departmental government, but not before thanking all the attendees as well as stating that from his freedom, he will fight for his right and for them not to continue to be violated. Hawkins was deprived of his freedom after the Attorney General Office established that apparently the governor, without any justification, used the declaration of manifest urgency to evade the bidder selection process and contract directly in a project of design, layout and printing of advertising material with messages of mitigation of COVID-19. After this, the defense filed a request for release based on a report by the Comptroller's Office which established that Hawkins did not commit any irregularity. This approach was accepted by the Criminal Chamber of the Superior Court of Bogota which found that the governor could defend himself from a position of freedom. With this decision, Hawkins could also be in a position of take back the reins of the Coral Palace which today has been led by former Secretary of Infrastructure Allen J. Stephens. It should be noted that in this process, Everett Hawkins had the support of the Latin American Human Rights Commission, which in turn asked the prosecutions to cease the prosecution of the governor of the island and that they will continue to monitor the case. Tele Islas News will be attentive to the development of this news and the next decision that will be taken regarding the process faced by the governor elected, Everett Hawkins. And today, 48 contagions are added to the active COVID-19 cases on the island. This was recorded in the daily report issued by the National Health Institute today. 48 new cases are added to the island today, giving a total of 3,284 cases detected in the department today. The administration has not yet published the location of these cases, how many people have recovered, and the total number of active cases on the island. Regarding the vaccination process in the department through resolution 517 of 21st of April of 2021, the Ministry of Health and Social Protection has signed over 500,000 doses of SARS-CoV vaccine from the Pfizer and Biotech laboratory to the second dose and 553,948 people that have received the first vaccine. In this assignment, the department is not included for not having an ultra freezer. Also, according to the registry, the population between 60 and 69 years of age in the department is 5,841 who have not been vaccinated. The Laceless News will be attentive to the analysis of this information, the lack of the ultra freezer, and if it affects the continuity of the vaccination process or the allocation of the new vaccines. And in compliance with the ruling of the Administrative Court, the Coralina Environmental Corporation announced the temporary closure of the Janiki Regional Park. The Corporation for the Sustainable Development of the Archipelago of San Andres, Coralina, announced that as of April 28, the Janiki Regional Park will be closed for maintenance work. This is a preventive closing from the key. It will be starting the 26th until the 28th. April, that is from Monday till Wednesday, and the main objective is to uh, develop, um, what will I say, activities in, in terms of the maintenance of the water system, the bathroom system, because usually we need to close. We can do this because you, you know, well, normally the one got sent, the one got sent. Um, this commodes look a bit so we have to embrace the opportunity and the the guidance, the guideline that the um, tribunal get to us to make this close every, every year. We have to make three close during the year and each one have to be at least for three days. So in you know, these days we want to uh, embrace the opportunity to make all kind of maintenance, repairs, the business them, the owner, the business them will uh, always they tend to them business, they clean, they organize inside and outside them business. The owners of the commercial establishment in the regional park will also join this initiative by cleaning and beautifying these areas. Another objective of the initiative is to generate a precedent so that tourist service providers in this area understand the importance of doing maintenance to all the services offered and that are required to do so for the park to remain a natural attraction.
And with an online participation of more than 40 people, the accountability report of the Coralina took place in the morning hours where the director of the corporation gave an assessment on his management, which began in 2020 and will go until 2023. Highlighting the importance of preserving the water resources of the archipelago, the director of Coralina gave a summary of today's accountability report. We focused a lot on the importance of preserving water resources by using alternative sources for its use. Since we have an open sea and there is a lot of technology where the use of the sea can be implemented to supply the community with quality water. The director of the Environmental Corporation also pointed out the topics that will be addressed in 2021. One of the major issues that we will address this year is the ecological restoration for all Providence through restoration projects, productive and ecological nurseries. We will also work with strategic alliances along with the governor's office with blue carbon projects, which has to do with the issue of climate change. Tres. It is worth mentioning that the official also reported that the environmental awareness campaigns will be implemented in different sectors of the island for the health for the... More than 9,000 million pesos were allocated to the department by the Ministry of Mines for the development of projects for access to public services, and this additional amount due to the impact the, is the islands received from Hurricane Ayora. The production incentive led by the Ministry of Mines seeks the support and to promote the extraction and transportation of oil, coal, gas and nickel in the country. All this through the resources of the general royalty system. It should be noted that for this year the incentive increased by 50% and will benefit 212 municipalities with more than 287,000 million pesos, including the archipelago, which added the more than 300 million pesos it will receive thanks to its participation in the maritime transportation of resources, will also receive 9,587 million pesos, with which it is expected to guarantee the optimum provision of public service, which was also affected by Hurricane Hayota. The incentive seeks to promote mining formalization and projects that support the social, sustainable and environmental development of the beneficiary municipalities. And with one session in the morning and another in the afternoon, the Human Rights Commission of the Congress of the Republic met with the community of Old Providence in a public hearing called Rebuilding Providence, Everyone's Duty. Accompanied by the President of the House of Representatives, several congressmen and guests, as well as the mayor and voices from within the community, the Human Rights Commission held a public hearing convened by the department's Congresswoman Elizabeth J. Pan. To make political control to be able to follow up on our public policies, which in this case, the national government has to achieve the reconstruction that all the inhabitants required and need here in Old Providence. Among the requests and agreements reached are the development of a political control debate. A hearing or debate of political control in the House of Representatives with all the actors involved, with all the representatives of the government in charge of the reconstruction of Old Providence, also with the local actors. On the other hand, they also agreed on the creation of a round table with the active participation of the community of Old Providence and the House of Representatives. The process of the rebuilding uh, by the national government went bad. Then do them covering the expectation and the needs for the community. And the next thing is that it's necessary to install were wa able to make a deal between the community for the fishermen, the farmers, the rest of the community. To continue to follow up on this whole situation that is happening with the reconstruction issue here on the island of Old Providence and establish a dialogue between the national government and the community, but where we can all participate in order to have certainty on how the reconstruction issue will be from here on out. In 15 days, there will be a political control debate to identify the weaknesses of the reconstruction process.
And with the support of the mayor's office and the governor's office, as well as the participation of the Apie Descalzo Foundation and the Rotary Club, an informative project on the sport of free diving or apnea was carried out. For five days, they have been informing the community of Old Providence about the development of the free diving or apnea sport, which is gaining strength in the archipelago. El desarrollo del the development of the sport of free diving to use it in a correct way, either in their daily life or for future projects with the same community or tourists. According to the instructor, Old Providence has both the community and the territory suitable for the development of this activity. In total, there were five days, not much time, but we made the best use of it. We had the opportunity to talk with the local people and to go out to see, to watch how they do it and teach them how I do it. We shared information and practice. Vanegas thanks the community of Southwest Bay and the fishermen who are open to the sport. We had the opportunity to meet with the fishermen of the cooperative and the Southwest community directly involved in fishing and tourism, and it is interesting to know that there is a willingness and desire to get involved. With this type of training, the Sport and Recreation Secretariat seeks to strengthen the knowledge of sportsmen in Old Providence. For the children and youth of the archipelago classes will resume at the Sandino Manuel Ellis Artistic Training School, sponsored by the Secretariat of Culture. Classes of piano, traditional music, guitar, drums, wind instrument, violin, folk music, painting, typical dance, among others are the classes in which interested children can enroll. The Secretary of Culture gave all information about it. I just want to inform to the whole community that will be beginning to inscribe in the program from FASME, you know, this cultural activity in different instrument playing. We want to the unit to come out to inscribe themselves because the 20th of this month, we will begin. So for that perfect reason, we want to know, to know that we also will be in a different community, inscribing the children and the youth them. But also, they can inscribe in the Google page. We go on page in Google, but also that same page, we are publish it in the official page from the governor, so you can give click and inscribe. So I want to encourage you to come out because you they need to involve in instrument playing such as guitar, battery, piano, etc., etc. So you know, don't know, let's inscribe and let's play. Also, we have job one. And this is how the third version of Clip Fest is moving along. In Clipfest, in its third season or version, we are going to tell you quickly what is happening so far with the contest, important numbers. We have already passed almost all of the first phase of the contest, which has been the registration. And now we are in what is the collection of storytelling, documentary, and musical lyrics. This is for the juries to review, analyze it, and decide whether or not you pass to the second phase. These are the numbers for you to take into account. In the musical category, we had 7 registered in the amateur modality and 10 registered in the professional modality of the musical category. In the documentary category, we have a total of 10 registered in the amateur category and 11 in the professional category of the documentaries. <laughs> 